Hey Lost Ones, so this week's video is a bit out of our normal travel vlogging. We are going all History Channel vibe on you, because well, at heart, and we love all things old and crumbly. So don't say we didn't warn you. Sit back, grab a coffee, and get ready to learn some stuff about the incredible Boutra National Park. And let us know in the comments, do you like these shorter, more informative videos, or should we just stick to our normal shenanigans? Boutrette National Park is one of those rare places in the world with both interesting human history and immense natural beauty. The little peninsula is littered with several archaeological sites from the Greek, Roman, Byzantine, Venetian, and Ottoman eras. But its marshes are also home to an impressive number of endangered species of plants and animals. With its strategic placement on the Ionian Sea, Boutrette was battled over by pretty much all the major players in the World Empire game. However, since 1992, it has been protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Just a few minutes outside the peaceful seaside village of Casamil, it's the perfect day trip for both history buffs and nature lovers. According to mythology, Boutrent was founded by refugees from the Trojan War. King Priam's son Hellenus and his band full of followers were escaping the aftermath of the Trojan War. When the sailors saw land, Hellenus decided to sacrifice an ox, and as the stumbling animal made its way to shore and finally expired on the beach, they took this as a good omen, and the weary travelers disembarked their ship and made Boutrotham, or wounded ox, their new home. In reality, scholars disagree about how old the human history really is here on Boutrin. But it's known for a fact that by the 6th century BC, there was a thriving community here, mostly because of this complex here. This is the sanctuary of Aesculapius, the god of medicine, and Greeks were bringing all of their wounded and sick here to be healed by the god in this incredible sanctuary. During the Greek time period, the waters here of Boutrin at the sanctuary were known for their healing, which led to mythological beliefs about nymphs living in the water. And walking through this part of the forest, you can definitely see why people would believe there were nymphs. By 220 BC, Boutrin had become a Roman colony. The Romans built defensive walls, created an elaborate system of baths and aqueducts, and of course added a Roman theater. Though Julius Caesar arrived here in about 44 BC, the place really started to grow under his heir Augustus who saw its potential. After defeating Cleopatra and Mark Anthony in the nearby town of Actium in 31 BC, Augustus started his building projects. The small ruins of what's left of the Roman bath here at Boutrent date from about the 2nd century AD. As the Romans moved in on the Greek territory, the Greek Agora was replaced by the Roman Forum. Now most of the forum today is still under two meters of soil. This area was only discovered by archaeologists in 2005, so it still hasn't been completely unearthed. However, there are two marble statues that are in the castle museum on display. Unfortunately, most of the forum was destroyed by an earthquake in the 4th century AD. The Roman city of Boutrent held so much sway that even Virgil wrote about it in his epic poem, The Aeneid. Roman style villas are famous for their mosaic floors and paintings. Unfortunately here in Boutrent, the water table is so high that most of those mosaics have been buried under muck and mud. For instance, this Roman villa was converted to a giant palace in about the fourth century AD. But the water table kept rising, and the owner quickly abandoned his palace in favor of higher ground. By the 6th century AD, the western part of the Roman Empire that we're all familiar with was dead and gone. But the eastern part of the empire was still flourishing, better known as the Byzantine Empire. 
In the 600s, Boutrit had its very own bishop, and so this elaborate baptistry was built. And in fact, it is the second largest baptistry in the whole of the Eastern Roman Empire, outside of the one in Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Turkey. Like the Roman villas here in Boutrit, the baptistry would have originally had an elaborately tiled mosaic floor and brightly colored walls. However, the elements of nature have destroyed the paint, and the Albanian authorities have covered all of the mosaics with sand to protect them from the rising water table. So with its complex history, the funny and beautiful thing about Boutrint is that you might have a second century fountain dedicated to some nymphs 20 foot away from a sixth century basilica dedicated to Christ. The basilica underwent many restorations, which is why with the theater, it's definitely the best preserved building on Bujan. This gigantic wall was part of the earliest settlement here in Butrin, from about the 4th century BC. The wall is made without mortar and is just large stones fit closely together. This gate is called the Lake Gate now, but it is thought to maybe be the Skian Gate in the epic poem The Aeneid by Virgil. It would have been the main entrance to Butrin during the Hellenistic period when most travelers approached by sea. The so-called Lion's Gate, named so for its relief depicting a lion biting the head off of a bull, was added in the 5th century AD, but the relief is probably from an older building on the peninsula from about the 6th century BC. It was added to make the gate into town a little bit smaller and easier to defend. It's very easy to see why everybody wanted a piece of this little peninsula. What a view. So after the Byzantines had their turn, Butrin was ruled by a succession of different empires. The Venetians got their hands on it for a little while, building this giant fortress in the 14th and 16th by the beginning of the 19th century, Butrin had pretty much become a fishing settlement. But then Ali Pasha, the ruler of the area, decided to build his fortress here, looking over the Bavari Canal so that he could defend himself against French attack launching from the Greek island of Corfu. The castle sits on what used to be the ancient Greek Acropolis, but now it serves as a modern day museum for the Butrin National Park. From the 11th to the 18th century, Venice was a powerhouse of the Mediterranean. And in the late 1300s, they purchased nearby island of Corfu in, in current day Greece and Boutrent. But it was hard to hold on to. So Boutrent went back and forth and back and forth between the Venetians and the Ottomans for years. It was then conquered in 1797 for a brief period by Napoleon before it was turned over to the despot Ali Pasha. The first century BC Roman philosopher and writer Cicero wrote to his friend Atticus that Boutrint is to Corfu what Antium is to Rome, the coolest, quietest, most pleasant place in the world. And after touring around here today, we kind of agree. Boutrint is definitely worth a half a day on your Albanian tour. Something very large just jumped in the water really close to me.
and I don't know what it was because it was like behind me. Now I'm a little creeped out. There's an intruder at the gate. Intruder at the gate. Came the home of a Christian bishop and fly. Oh, Davis, I forgot to tell you. Apparently one of the endangered species here on Bouchrent is a wolf. It's gonna be an interesting walk back in the dark. Let's grab the nose, guys. I'm not picking my boogers, I promise. That Bouchrent is to sip. <laughs> <laughs> that Bouchrent, where are we at? Not Cyprus. What is this? Greek Island over there. Corfu. All right, got it. <laughs>